The U.S. Navy's next-generation supercarrier, USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, set sail from Naval Station Norfolk on Tuesday on its first combat deployment. Following a two-month deployment in the U.S. 2nd and 6th Fleet areas of operation in fall 2022, this marks Gerald R. Ford's second deployment and its first with a combat focus. The deployment comes nearly six years after its delivery from Huntington Ingalls Industries, Newport News Shipbuilding, and subsequent commissioning in 2017, marking the first new design aircraft carrier delivered to the Navy since USS Nimitz, CVN-68, in 1975. It's also the first aircraft carrier to join the fleet since USS George H.W. Bush, CVN-77, delivered in 2009. In this video, Defense Updates reports on the first combat deployment of USS Gerald R. Ford. Let's get into the details. The Gerald R. Ford is the lead ship in the Navy's Gerald R. Ford class of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers and the capital ship of the Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group GRF -CSG. The strike group comprises over 6,000 sailors, Carrier Air Wing CVW-8, Destroyer Squadron Desron-2, the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser USS Normandy CG-60, and the Information Warfare Commander. The Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers USS Ramage DDG-61, USS McFall DDG-74, and USS Thomas Hudner DDG-116 make up the ships of Desron II. The USS Gerald R. Ford was delivered to the U.S. Navy in 2017, however, the post-delivery installation and commissioning procedures extended over four years, adding to the unprecedented $13 billion cost of acquiring the vessel. Even in January of this year, the Pentagon's testing watchdog cautioned that there may still be additional work required. dot and &E, in an annual report released in mid-January, noted, the reliability of CVN-78 catapults, arresting gear, and jet blast deflectors JBDs, continue to have an adverse effect on sortie generation and flight operations efficiency. Rear Admiral Greg Huffman, Commander, Carrier Strike Group 12, said, this strike group is the cornerstone of the Navy's forward operations, capable of meeting any tasking provided by regional combatant commanders to ensure peace and stability at sea. Our presence at sea throughout the deployment will provide reassurance to our partners and allies that sea lanes will remain open and our joint operations will demonstrate our commitment to interoperability and maritime stability. Captain Rick Burgess, Ford's commanding officer, said, the sailors of Gerald R. Ford are ready and able to perform because of the strenuous training they've put in to get this ship ready to deploy, and also in large part to the support of their families and friends. This ship and crew are actively reshaping the face of our Navy's capabilities and strengthening the future of our naval aviation. Viewers may note that Ford successfully completed the third and final scheduled explosive event for full ship shock trials on August 8, 2021. The U.S. military detonated a 20-ton or 40,000-pound bomb next to the new supercarrier. The explosion was so powerful that it registered 3.9 on the Richter scale. The blast is comparable to 100 modern depth charges exploding simultaneously. Ford-class supercarriers are being built to replace some of the United States Navy's existing Nimitz-class carriers since the Nimitz design has now reached its threshold. Being the first ship of the class, the success of Gerald R. Ford is critical. It brings in completely new technologies, such as large-scale automation, new reactors, electromagnetic aircraft launch systems, advanced arresting gear, advanced weapons elevators, and new sensors. The carrier, on April 2nd, wrapped up its required Composite Training Unit Exercise, or COM2X, in which it worked to integrate carrier strike group elements as a cohesive force, according to the Navy. The exercise also marked the first time the carrier embarked a full carrier air wing. Rear Admiral Greg Huffman, commander of Carrier Strike Group 12, said in a Navy news release, 
COMP2X served as a doctorate level test of the strike group's ability to operate collectively across the spectrum of warfare areas while incorporating the first in class Gerald R. Ford into the strike group. Huffman said, the robust scenarios challenged every facet of our warfighting capability, enabling growth and learning at every level, allowing us to further refine our warfare tactics and processes. The exercise solidified our already cohesive strike group, and I'm extremely proud of the team's determination and eagerness to constantly learn and improve in the most demanding situations. Our readiness is the highest it's ever been, and I feel fortunate for the opportunity to deploy with this amazing team. During the fall operations, the crew was oriented with the new technologies installed on the vessel and worked on air defense, anti-subsurface warfare, and distributed maritime operations. The COMP2X exercise facilitated the carrier crew to experiment with fresh methods to utilize some of the new technology on the Ford, such as the dual-band radar system that was customized for the ship. When Gerald R. Ford was commissioned, the U.S. Navy hadn't commissioned a new generation of aircraft carriers in almost 40 years. As the lead ship of the Ford-class aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford represents not only a significant leap forward in the U.S. Navy's ability to project power globally, but its proper operation in real-life situations is important for the next ships, John F. Kennedy, CVN-79, Enterprise, CVN-80, Doris Miller, CVN-81, and yet-to-be-named CVN-82. The Ford Carrier Strike Group is heading to U.S. Sixth Fleet, where it will project power for U.S. Naval Forces Europe and Africa. It replaces the George H.W. Bush Carrier Strike Group, which returned to Norfolk, Virginia, concluding a nearly eight-month deployment to U.S. Sixth Fleet. If Gerald R. Ford is able to complete the deployment without any major issues, it will be a great boost to the U.S. Navy and U.S. military as a whole. Also, it's important to note the warship is en route to Europe, a region currently grappling with its most significant security crisis in recent years due to Russia's involvement in the Ukrainian conflict. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.